Hello guys, welcome to Darren McGarvey's Common People. Today, what I want to do is, uh, I, want, I want to react to an article that was published uh, in The Guardian uh, anonymously, uh, which is arguing that the new Matilda musical film is traumatic for child abuse victims and that Hollywood must be careful. Now, it's the sort of article which, in terms of the Guardian comment section, really conforms to the stereotype that the Guardian has for articles that just somehow elicit an uncomfortable sense of, of hilarity around subjects which really aren't funny. And it's because of the way that it's framed and it's because of the wider context most people understand the Guardian to be a bit kind of fluffy and liberal a bit fragile. Now, don't get me wrong, um, in terms of actual news and analysis and commentary, The Guardian is is as good as, as any other publication in the world, 80% uh, of the time. But its comment section for me is getting more Daily Mash-esque by the day. Now, I'm going to read, read much of this article and then offer my thoughts as we go through. Obviously, I've, I've began the piece a bit facetiously there, but I just want to say that I do think it's 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 wise that the person has published it anonymously uh, because this is going to save them a lot of hassle in terms of any personal or targeted criticism that they might receive as a result of this because obviously this is going to feed into all the woke agenda. And so a lot of people, they're not really going to read the substance of the piece. They're going to react from a sense of irritation, perhaps unkindly. Um, what I just want to clarify is that I understand that this person is not only entitled to their view, but their, their, their view is deeply held. And so I want to treat it with an appropriate level of sensitivity, given that we're talking about children, we're talking about abuse, we're talking about trauma. And, uh, and on that note, we shall begin. There's no denying that Emma Thompson's latest transformation into the sadistic Agatha Trunchbull and Netflix's new Matilda, the musical film, is an act of brilliance, both from the Oscar winner herself and an army of makeup artists. Now, I just want to say, I haven't seen the film. I've seen the, the, the first Matilda film, directed by Danny DeVito, a classic film, uh, in my opinion, obviously based on a classic Roald Dahl um, book. My kids have seen it. One of my kids has seen it twice. So my wife, who's a musician, was so impressed by the film uh, that she has been recommending that I go and see it, even though it's a kid's film, which lets me know that it's a high quality piece of work. So anyway, the writer continues, but explicit scenes of Miss Trunchbull's violent behaviour are likely to prove to be a traumatic experience for both children and survivors of child abuse alike. Just to contextualise this, what we're talking about here is the idea of post-traumatic stress. It's the idea that a stressful event occurs in your life at some point, and this means that you have develop a sense of uh, hypervigilance around being exposed to anything that might remind you of that, whether it's conversation, whether it's images, whether it's environments. And this is a very real thing, and a thing that has to be acknowledged. And for every individual, it's different what the level of recovery from the trauma is, how long it takes, the various circumstances and treatments and support that need to be in place. But also, I would say in my personal view, the word trauma has been slightly watered down in recent years because it's often used for discussing how people feel when they're exposed to certain types of media, certain types of culture, certain types of art. And as someone who has experienced very real trauma and had a post-traumatic stress uh, response to it, which I had to work on for many years, um, I understand where people are coming from when they say that a film is traumatizing, but like a lot of people out there, particularly those from more difficult backgrounds where there's a more of a prevalence of, of violence and scary stuff going on, sometimes the stuff where people are kind of shrieking about something they've seen in a film or a theatre, it sort of feels a wee bit kind of, oh, come on, you know? So I just want to register my honest thoughts at this point. 
Matilda author Roald Dahl is well known for his focus on cruelty to children. From child killing witches to body disfigurement for naughty children in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Matilda itself contains graphic lines such as The trunch bull simply grabbed me by one ear and rushed me to the chokey at the double and threw me inside and locked the door. I was sliced and cut all over when I came out. Now, my view is that these films and books, obviously they use kind of cartoonish violence, but I think it's important to understand that often the the violence registers for the kid is kind of humorous. And even if it is a wee bit frightening, it's so, it's so over-dramatized, it's so extra exaggerated. I mean, when you think about the way that the kids come to harm in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and you think about the reasoning behind that, what the film and what the book are trying to allude to is that um, consequences follow for selfish uh, behavior. And that while that might be quite an extreme example and very much of its time, it's still quite a universal thing. We're all trying to teach our children, you know, to, to show gratitude, to be polite, not because we want to put on a show, but because these are traits that will serve them well and that will lead to them forming a deeper, richer connection with people around them. So this characterization uh, that the focus is on cruelty to children, I just, I reject that because actually often the focus is on uh, the, the adults, the caregivers and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the parents are absolutely, uh, absolutely idiotic. And so it's very clear. You see in every instance, a parent is enabling a child's behavior to deteriorate, whether it's, um, you know, the wee guy that's watching too much TV, the wee guy that's eating too many sweets, the, the spoiled girl who, who, who wants to buy all the chocolate bars in the world and she's constantly being given everything that she wants. Often, it's these are devices that are passing comment about hapless adults and caregivers in positions of trust and authority who let children down. Um, okay, this literary interest in child abuse goes back a long way. Is it an interest in child abuse? I'm not sure it is. It's an interest in children. It's an interest in situations that can transpire where children are involved, where there's power imbalances, where, as I say, there's adults who don't have a clue, people who have authority that's unjustified and unearned. But I just think that characterization, this interest in child abuse, that to me is demonstrating a writer who is traumatized. And so they're viewing it through a hypervigilant lens. And when they see incidences of trauma, when they see incidences of what they're perceiving as child abuse, and that is creating more fear and a reaction in them. And they're also seeing that in a culture which is currently kind of obsessed with the idea of trauma, that everything can be traumatizing, that we have to be protected from things that might upset us. And while I wouldn't cast dispersions or judgments on people who feel that way, as someone, as I say, who's experienced very real trauma, I know and within myself that um, trauma actually made me more resilient. Trauma actually gave me a higher threshold for what shocks me. Trauma actually kind of toughened me up. And no matter what your circumstances are in life, uh, you, you're not going to get out alive without experiencing trauma because trauma is not specific circumstances or specific events or specific things happening to us. It's relative. So if the worst thing that's ever happened to you is you walk in and you find your pet has died, then that is the most traumatic thing that has happened to you. And you might then suffer trauma relative to that. Whereas somebody who was mauled by a dog because their parents were drunk and nobody was looking after them, the experience of trauma is just as upsetting, even though it's objectively worse. And so this is the thing about this constant obsession with subjectivity and, and this kind of hierarchy of what trauma is more important or less important. Even wealthy, rich people who go to boarding school, they experience trauma. This explains, for example, the lack of empathy. Often when it comes to poorer people, that can be a trauma response in and of itself. Now, I don't want to labor the point here, but it's obvious that this particular individual um, is, is seeing depictions of adults behaving poorly around children as a fixation or interest in child abuse itself. And I just, I reject that. I mean, we say in Lord of the Flies, 
as kind of fetishizing child abuse, as Lord of the Flies not passing comment about the human condition, about power, about the, the will to dominate others, about the vulnerability of democracy and order. Um, or are we just looking at it on a surface level and saying these kids are all hitting each other on the head with bricks? Uh, why are we so obsessed with seeing children hitting the head with bricks? It's particularly poignant in Netflix's new adaptation of Matilda, adapted from the stage musical by Tim Minchin and Dennis Kelly. This not only because of the famous pigtail scene, which also featured in the 1996 Danny DeVito directed versions. This is when Trunchbull grabs one of the kids by the pigtails and does uh, swinging around and throws them. Uh, a way into the distance. I mean, it's it's hilarious cartoonish violence. It's an exaggeration that's displaying the unfair power dynamic that teachers in a certain day and age had over children and how they could use their authority to mask uh, their propensity for violence and intimidation towards children purely as a result of the unfair power dynamic. Thankfully, we see a lot less and less of that uh, these days. We see innocent Amanda Thripp swung around by her pigtails and we hear her screams in the squelch for pigtails being yanked from her head. There is a new addition of an even more traumatic scene of mutilation where Eric is lifted into the air by his ears as Miss Trunchbull stretches them out several inches from his head. So obviously, children who have had their ears stretched out from their head should be asking for a trigger warning at the start of Matilda. It's a very, very niche section of the population who have had their actual ears stretched by a human being who is so strong that they're able to perform that function, but still, very important to extend compassion. Bluntly speaking, seeing these graphic scenes of cruelty on the screen and hearing the screams of the children in agony make for a far worse experience than reading Dow's novels. Film makes the abuse seem ever more real. It is right in front of your face, traumatizing children and providing an equally uncomfortable watch for those that have experienced child abuse. Okay, so I want evidence there. If I was making this kind of claim, I would then provide evidence if I was writing it in, in The Guardian. I'm surprised that the, the editor has not come back and said, could you provide us examples of the level of re-traumatization that occurs when children who have experienced a traumatic event are then exposed to films and media that depict in a very cartoonish way bad things happening to children. That is a claim that needs to be backed up. Because actually, and this is just anecdotal to my own experience, I found that um, exposing myself to things that I find uncomfortable um, from a place of trauma and learning how to navigate them has helped to strengthen the levels of resilience and that is part of the recovery process. And I'm not saying that that is for everyone, but it is important uh, to recognise, as I say, trauma is going to harm to all of us in different ways and it's just an unfortunate aspect of life. Um, it's how we deal with it, it's how we contextualise it and it's the meaning that we make of it that will dictate how long that trauma is going to resonate and impact us or a point where we can begin to move beyond it. Or take the 2017 adaptation of Stephen King's It, where seven-year-old Georgie has his arm torn off by Pennywise before being dragged into the sewers to his death. In the new American sci-fi horror film Megan, we see a young boy's ear ripped off by a lifelike artificial intelligence doll. These are metaphors. This is using the medium of cinema to, to create metaphors around uh, how the modern world or the world at the time the film was made is impacting people, is impacting children. And so also these are horror films and they shouldn't be conflated with kids' movies or family films. The cruelty against children in cinema is becoming greater, and in an age where we are so aware of the long-term impact of trauma, it seems so reductive and con contradictory that these graphic scenes of abuse are being pumped out in the cinema and with a tone that makes entertainment out of this serious issue. Now, I've noticed that there are no... Uh, there's no analysis or commentary on the levels of so social deprivation and class inequality that occur in, uh, in the UK and which um, predispose children from poorer backgrounds to more frequent, more serious levels of traumatic events. No analysis of that at all. And this is the problem when you don't have a class analysis when you're talking about these kind of things. Because what we're now saying is the key to protecting children from being traumatized or re-traumatized 
is to create an environment where parents feel anxious about showing their children films that depict anything that is even slightly close to something bad that might have happened. Personally, I don't think that is the way to go. Final paragraph, children should be educated about child abuse in today's society, of course, but as a movie musical that blends big dance numbers with physical cruelty and mutilation really the best option? Yes, it is. Thank you. Like, subscribe, share, take it easy. Oh,